<clears throat> hey guys, so I'm Tom Stokeman, two-time World's Strongest Man. Grew up in the Highlands of Invergordon. And uh, yeah, I do the sports strongman. I travel the world competing. Uh, most importantly, if I was diagnosed with autism at a young, as a young boy, I lived my whole life with challenges and you know, people say I'm never going to do anything and stuff. And you know, since I have this profile now and you know, won these titles, I want to try and change the stigma of autism and go to schools and do talks that you know, having autism doesn't mean you're different. So that's why I'm here today as well. I'm Tom's brother, Luke. Um, by no means an expert in anything. I'm not a doctor, um, but I have a, a real passion about being happy and being, being able to navigate through this confusing world that we're in at the moment. Um, and as you know, the doctors, psychologists, amazing people there, you know, we're gonna touch on you know, the mental health, the crisis, the, the devastating effects that you know, not looking after ourselves um, can, can have on us. Or on us you know, so although we're, we're physically very strong, um, mentally we have to be very strong to do what we do as well. And I think that um, is something that we try and kind of preach, you know, that kind of resilience that you need to kind of be happy in this world um, is something that I'm a, a true believer of. And my saying is, um, cold water makes me very happy. So I'm very happy today because I've just been for a swim this morning. Yeah, I think uh, 100% there's a much more you know, people doing that, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I'm kind of one of the blueprints that saved my life, you know, I didn't, I couldn't get on at school, I, you know, being off autistic, you know, getting bullied, getting labelled, and, you know, I left school and at 16 years old, I joined a gym thinking, you know, what am I doing here, and having an older brother to kind of lead the way, and the gym's changed my life, the gym's taught me life lessons, the gym's taught me how to obviously, you know, talk, talk to public, and I've learned everything I've learned has been in the gym, and, you know, we've opened a gym up in the Highlands for, people that live up, you know, in those kind of areas to come to the gym and just, you know, let their in expressions out, you know, and there's a lot of people that come with, you know, bad mental health, stressed, anxious, um, you know, that maybe just just want to kind of let, let everything out and that's the gym's a safe place to do that and, you know, we advise it. There's no one that's scared to come and, yeah, we've seen a big change in kind of the mental health. I think all around Scotland as well, there's a lot of people that have kind of, I think, are saving their own lives now by, you know, by going to do fitness, not just the gym, but like you did, cold water, going out runs, walking daily and stuff, it's changing people's lives. Definitely, as Tom says, you know, the gym, um, physical activity is, is amazing. Any type of activity is amazing. Any, any struggle, I think, that you can put your body in and surpass that struggle and the struggle, you know, every time Tom and I go into the gym and train, it's a massive struggle. It's really tough what we do. But then that dopamine hit, that, that release, that endorphins, that, that, that test that you pass, that's the, that's, the, that's the thing for us, I think. And today, going out for a swim this morning, didn't really want to go out for a swim. Um, again, it's a struggle, it's really hard, it's really cold. But overcoming those tests, and um, you, you touched on resilience, you know, that word is so powerful, you know, being resilient in yourself. That's how we're going to overcome this crisis. We can, we can overcome it individually but as a community when we form those groups those you know cold water groups that people go out for swims the gyms the communities that are formed in gyms we're, we're, we're quite keen on being individuals at the moment in this world and that's great we're all individuals but we're so much more alike we're so much better when we're together like this this amazing people here you know what we can give or what we can talk about is so much better because I get to learn from you amazing guys I'm not a doctor, I'm just some guy that gets high from cold water and goes to the gym. But, but I know it, ma it makes me feel so good, so why would it not then make someone else feel good? Why would not seeing a sunrise? Why would, why would not going out for a walk in the forest, in the woods, connecting with nature? That's the thing, not this concrete jungle that we live in, not our, our, our head in the phone all the time. So yes, going to the gym is amazing, but it's not a, a one piece fits all, I think. I think it's just finding your thing. I mean, from our experience, we, we do an online strength academy so we can connect with people all over the world. So we can, you know, share our tips and tricks and um, give them insights to our daily life. Um, I think social media, again, definitely pros and cons for sure. Um, from a, a health point of view, I remember when I started training, I was 16, I'm 40 this year, so it was a, a while ago. Um, but my point is that when I was 16, we didn't have the access to the social media on my phone. So it took me a lot longer to learn how to do my passion, which was working out in the gym, being fit, being strong. So 
if I had easier access then, you know, I might have been able to do it quicker. Um, only recently, the last two, three years, I've been able to, you know, give up a job and gone full time into this. But maybe before, if I had access to a phone, it would have been a bit more attainable at an earlier stage. So, and again, I think it's just, it just comes down to using it right. You have, it's, it's everywhere you go in the workplace, you'll have negative people, you have positive people. On social media, you're going to have negative, you're going to have positive. Tom and I get negative and positive comments on our social media. What, what do you normally do? You normally focus on the negative. You know, you have one bad comment. Oh my God, I'm, I'm so distraught at that one bad comment. And there's a hundred more positive ones. So again, it's about that resilience. It's like, okay, not everyone can like what I'm doing. Not everyone's going to agree with that. But then those other hundred people that are commenting really nice stuff. Why can't I take that on and, and, and use that as kind of positivity rather than focus on that one negative? Uh, yeah, just while we're on the subject of uh, social media, this question is sort of like mainly aimed at uh, Tom and Luke, but I guess open to the panel if they want to uh, pitch in. So uh, I'm a big fan of Strongman, and one of the things that I find like quite attractive about it is how positive it, it is, how everybody seems to like... Um, back each other uh, up and so on. And I was watching uh, one of your videos on YouTube uh, a couple of days ago. It was the one where you were uh, talking part of the L'Oreal uh, campaign thing about mental health. And there were 150 comments uh, on that video. Uh, I, read, I read through them all. 100, 147 of those comments were all really, really positive. Uh, there was three negative ones in there, but I would suggest that probably fairly atypical of what you find on social media. I think you, you, you'll find that that's a, the, the, the balance is slightly different elsewhere. So I was wondering, what is it that you think there is about uh, Strongman, about that community that sort of like lends itself to, to being the positives far outweighing the negatives and what lessons are there that, from that community that perhaps could be like taken to the wider audience? Strongman, I think, is a, is a dangerous sport. I mean, every single athlete that does it is risking their life. And, uh, you know, we respect that, you know, if we're brothers, we compete. And, uh, you know, every single one of us is like a big family. And uh, that's the strongman. And that's why the fans get so into us as well. Because, you know, when we go to these competitions, when we do these talks, we have so much time for the fans. We have so much time for the people that spend the money to come and see us. Because, you know, we're putting on a show, but these are the guys that are helping us get to where we want to be. And, uh, I think you know it goes by what me and Luke do on YouTube, but all the other strong men as well. You know, like the Americans, the other British guys, Eddie Hall, all them. Every single one of us always gets 99% good comments, and there's you know there's always one or two trolls, but it's never ever the negative never outweighs the positive, and I think that's what it is. You know, we're like friendly guys, although we're bigger guys. Anyone can come chat to us. Anyone can get photos of us. We take the time in the world to speak to people, and like we're just normal people, and I think. Every single straw man you see is the same person. And obviously they just put on maybe the, the bad guy for the show or they put on the, the different kind of, you know, they just play up to the crowd a bit. But as soon as the show's done, yeah, you can come and, you know, mix with us and just do what you want. And I think, you know what? I think so, yeah. I think definitely it's, it's, it's the people that make it, you know, the sport. If we were prima donnas and, you know, whatever, you know, it wouldn't be so well liked. But I think also, like, strong man the name it's almost very kind of primal as well isn't it it's like you know and i don't mean this in a toxic male masculinity way by any means so but for me you know being a man i want to be strong i, I want to be that and and it's very working class as well strong man as a whole you know it's we've not come from you know high-end backgrounds or anything like that we've had to you know, have resilience, you know, work hard, struggle every day, go to a cold gym in the Highlands and train. You know, we trained out of mum and dad's garage and like, in their shed and the floor was crumbling. And, but the, the, the term strongman, I think it just resonates with people, certainly in the UK, you know, it's, it's <coughs> what the old days almost had, you know, that's what it was. It was like a strongman. Yeah, it, it was comforting, you know, to, and I, I'm happy to be a strongman. Yeah, well, <laughs> watch, if I get hungry, I don't know, I might have a nibble, but um, I, I think that's what it is, you know, and I think there's a lot of stuff in the media that kind of tarnishes that, it being okay to say that I'm a strong man, you know, I'm a strong man for my wife, for my brother, for my family, for my, my, my mum that passed away, you know, I'm a strong man, and, I, and I'm very proud of that, 
So the media kind of directs us in a different way sometimes, but the people can, sorry, the people, we, as people, we can see what we're supposed to do. And I think being a strong man, being a strong woman, being strong people, that again is what we need to do to overcome this crisis and be resilient. And, and I hope that's what Strong Man kind of shows to you guys watching it. I think for, for men, men open up the best. This is my experience when we're doing something. So when we get together in a group and when we do cold water swims afterwards, that's where the best conversations happen with men that have never done cold water, have never opened up before. But like, oh, I can see why this works. I've been really struggling the last little while. Same when you go to the gym after a really good workout, that's when people can open up. And same in, in Strongman, after we have a competition, that's when all the, the doubts, the fears, the anxiety, the, the worries of competing and of, of daily life, you know, being a strong man, you know, come out. So I think when, when men are active in a group and then after that, after you go through that struggle, I think that's where it comes out a little bit more. And, um, you know, I mean, Tom and I, we just talk, you know, that, that's what we do. And a lot of the other guys do that as well. Maybe not as vocal on social media because being vulnerable on social media is very scary sometimes as well. So I'm okay with being vulnerable. I'll cry, I'll, you know, laugh, whatever. I'll cry in the water. If I need to cry, I'll laugh in the water, whatever. Whatever I need to do, I can do that. But other guys maybe aren't as confident kind of doing that. And I think it's trying to showcase that being a vulnerable man or showing your vulnerabilities as a man or as people, as women, whatever. Um, women are obviously a lot better at that. You've got it nailed, you amazing creatures. Um, <laughs> But men, we are like we're oh, stoic, we're strong, and we can't show vulnerability. But once you start to show vulnerability, that's when things really open up. And you know, it was a great question I thought from the over there asking about different things. You know, the psychedelic side, all this other bits and pieces. Scotland, there's a huge awakening I think in Scotland, and that's the exciting thing in Scotland. You know, we are doing things that are really inspirational here in Scotland and that's what we should be proud of. That's what we should be proud about. We're looking for other ways, you know, for us all to get better and I've diverged a little bit there, but um, yeah, strong man's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. you know, I think it's just keeping your circle small and uh, keeping the, you know, the people that actually are there for you and uh, go with them. Don't just go with your, you know, people that are just going to take advantage of you. Keep your circle small and uh, that'll 100% help as well. So. Uh, jump into the cold water. Um, <laughs> Why, why would you not? Why would you not go see a sunrise? Be in the water, ground yourself, immerse yourself in Mother Nature because she will look after you. I, I truly believe that. Um, and obviously, what all you guys say—that's amazing. <laughs> you sound so much better, but I'm just and then jump, the and then jump in the water. Yeah. yeah. You're <laughs> my heroes. Oh, you man. really are. You've inspired me, Uto. Especially you, Uto. Yeah. Still need to get it done, but. Three, one, two, three, one.